can see you guys over my 16 inch MacBook Pro. Today we're doing an Ask IJ episode. I haven't done one of these in so long. That's where you guys ask me questions and I answer and all of these questions I took from Twitter. A ton of you asked me what I think of the new MacBook Pro and obviously I love it. I'm going to be doing a bigger video talking about it here very shortly, but so far it's been awesome. It has stayed so much cooler when I edit on my lap and that little bit of screen real estate has actually made a huge difference when I'm editing in Final Cut. So I have been extremely happy, but let's get into the rest of the questions. Where should I put this? Maybe I'll put it off to here, is that okay? I haven't done one of these in a while. So we're gonna start with this first question from Nicholas because it's something that I'm extremely excited about and something that I've been wanting to tell you guys for so long. I did make one video talking about it, but I am doing a conference on January 31st and February 1st in Los Angeles. We're calling it Vlog University, and for those of you who have been a part of my channel for a really long time, you might remember it's something that I started about nine, 10 years ago. So next year, 2020, is the 10 year anniversary of Vlog University. What better way to celebrate a crazy idea that I had when I feel like I was still a child is now a massive conference that we're having in Los Angeles. It's basically going to be two days filled with speakers, incredible instructors, to basically teach you everything that you need to know to become a content creator. So all the things that you're gonna be learning about video editing, production, lighting, photography, even makeup tips, script writing, what gear to get. We have lawyers, we have people from my team, my manager, my agents. Everyone kind of inside my little iJustine bubble, we're all gonna be there and giving you guys some of the things that we've learned over the past 13 years. So to be able to do this, to give back to you guys and to be able to meet a bunch of you who wanna become future content creators is honestly the craziest, coolest thing that I think that I will ever be able to be a part of. So I look forward to seeing many of you guys there. Check out Vlog University for more information and at checkout use iJustine 10 so that you can get a 10% discount. If you do plan on attending, make sure you register before December 31st. That way you will get not only a free t-shirt, but we will be able to have a better sense of how many people will be attending. There's a lot of planning that's going into this. We've been working on this for the past year and I cannot be more excited. So Nicholas, thank you for your question. This is a really great question from Caitlin and she's asking, what is the biggest thing that you've learned so far in your career and what do you think the future of YouTube and content creators will be? I love this question because it kind of segues very well from the Vlog University concept and really what I wanted to do with that is I wanted to give all of the knowledge and the insight that I've learned over the years. And one of the biggest lessons that I've learned, I'm just gonna give it away here, is to just keep going. There's been so many times throughout my career that I've questioned what I'm doing, I've questioned myself, I've questioned people around me, and you just get to a point where you have to just keep going. Like there's always something else that's going to happen next. You just have to kind of get to that point. And sometimes it's not easy. It can be extremely difficult. Life can get in the way, people can get in the way, but you just have to, I guess, kind of trust yourself to know that you're strong enough to keep going, you're strong enough to pave the way for whatever it is that you want to do. And I know it sounds absolutely crazy because if I was sitting here years and years ago listening to somebody tell me these things, I would say you're crazy. But until you sort of live these life experiences or you get to a point where anything that I'm saying makes sense, it's not going to make sense. Answering your second question, what do I think of the future of YouTube and content creators will be? I mean, I have no idea. I just hope that doing Vlog University, having fun events and having a safe place where people can talk, make friends and find other people in this industry that are doing the same things as you are is so amazing because when I started there was nobody else doing this I had no friends doing this everyone thought I was crazy I mean I definitely was because no one else was doing this everyone told me I should stop I shouldn't do this I remember like one of my old bosses at my job when I quit my actual job he basically told me that I was going to amount to nothing and I basically took that pain and anger as motivation of like, well, you don't think I'm gonna be anything? Well, I'm gonna completely prove you wrong. So sometimes that negativity can be completely flipped around and you can use it to your advantage. Did I answer your question? Probably not. Ken Schillinger is asked, Schill Schill I probably pronounced your last name wrong. Schillinger. Am I ever going to do cooking videos again? You miss them. I honestly do miss them a lot, but it kind of turned into this thing where I used to use cooking videos as filler content between tech videos. But now I feel like this year there has been so much tech that it's kind of taken over for the cooking video. So I do plan on doing some holiday videos. So if there's anything that you'd like to see me bake for the holidays, please, please, please leave it in the comments below and hopefully I can make you some delicious holiday delights. This is a very interesting question from Lakshay. All of my social media links state to be my friend. There's a difference in being a follower and a friend. Now will you consider changing it? It's crazy because in the beginning, when I first started doing this stuff, everyone was a friend. I knew every single person that was following me because it was such a small community and a small audience that 
everyone knew each other. I would recognize people's avatars. I would see the same people tweet me all the time. And it's crazy because even though I do have a bigger audience, I'm still reading my comments. I'm still on Twitter, even though I may not respond to everything. I recognize the people who continually tweet me. I recognize people who comment all the time. So I sometimes think that you guys don't think that I do read my stuff, but I do. I'm here all day on Instagram, on Twitter. With that being said though, I have cut back significantly because I think that through the years, I was so focused on social media that I wasn't living my own life. So I think that I have finally found sort of a happy medium between that. I still definitely spend way too much on my phone, too much time on my computer, but I've cut back a lot. I guess to answer your question though, uh, I'm not gonna be changing it to follower because I still consider you guys friends. Owen is asking, what are my thoughts on the rumors of the 2020 iPhone 12 or is it too early? Oh my gosh, it's definitely not too early because I feel like everything in that 2020 iPhone has already sort of been leaked. I do remember last year, this design of the iPhone was leaked in like January. Who really knows anymore? Let's see if there's any latest rumors. iPhone 2020. All right, Mac rumors. What have you guys got for me? 5.4, 6.7, 6.1 sizes, triple lens, 3D camera with laser, all OLED displays, 5G revamped design, A14 chip. It's crazy that they have this much potentially leaked information already. I just think that 5G is, it's gonna be great, but unless it's in your area, unless you're near that tower, like it's not gonna actually work very well. So I'm excited about 5G, but I don't think the technology is really gonna be ready. I guess this is by September of next year, so going along the same timeline as this year and previous years. So yeah, this says Apple looks expected to release the 2020 iPhone 12 in September of 2020. Under display touch ID, I don't think they will do that. For some reason, I just really don't think that they're gonna waste their time. There's a lot of other things that you can waste your time doing, like maybe a foldable phone, which I also don't think that they will do. So 2020 iPhone, I'm excited. Next question. Will I ever wait in line for an iPhone launch like I did with the iPhone 6? That was such a crazy time. If any of you guys remember, my sister and I slept outside for like 50 some hours to get the iPhone 6. This is back when the pre-orders were such a struggle, like nothing ever worked properly. I just kept getting screwed trying to get pre-orders for my iPhone. So when I realized that I wouldn't have an iPhone for launch day, I asked my sister and some of my friends if they wanted to sleep outside and we did and it was an amazing experience. I definitely don't think that I really ever want to do that again, but it's something that I did. It's something that I experienced and I really don't ever want to have to do it again. It was fun. But I think in my old age, I don't know if I could handle it. <laughs> Alec is asking, what do I do to make myself feel better when you're feeling sad or depressed? It's taken me years to figure out what I need for myself to make myself feel better. And sometimes there's just no way out of it. You just have to kind of keep going, keep moving. Like I said before, just, Keep moving forward, keep going, don't quit. But what I found is it's definitely exercise, working out, finding activities to do to kind of distract my mind from you know feeling the way that I'm feeling, doing yoga, going for hikes, going for walks, just kind of getting out of my element, making myself sort of feel uncomfortable. But something that I also started almost a year and a half ago is I started training in jujitsu and I have not talked about this at all on my channel. So it's kind of weird that I'm even mentioning it. I don't post about it, I don't talk about it. I don't think I've never taken a single picture of myself training, but it's something that I do for myself. I don't do it for anyone else. And that has brought me this sort of peace and like this purpose outside of creating content, out of posting on social media. So find something that you do for yourself. You don't do for anyone else. You don't do it for the internet. You don't do it for your parents or your boyfriend, girlfriend, sister, brother, whatever. You do it for you and no one else. And it's crazy because some of like my favorite achievements even recently are things that I've never even shared. Milestones that I've made training, friends that I've made at the gym. It's just, it's really crazy because for my entire life, I have posted everything online. Like I have posted so much. So to just completely flip a switch and decide that this is something I'm doing for me and not the internet, it's incredibly refreshing. So I encourage anyone, whatever your mindset, whatever you're going through, to find something, find a new hobby, find something absolutely just completely out of your comfort zone and go do it. Be uncomfortable. Oh God, I was uncomfortable for probably like six months. There's so many times even now after almost, I guess, training for almost two years, I still every day, sometimes I will leave a session and I'm like, man, oh, this is just, it's so defeating, but you keep going. It's a lot like life. And I think that's why I really, really love 
love it. One day, maybe I'll make a full video talking about my experience, but right now it's still something that I'm doing for me, but I'm only mentioning this because I want you guys to do something for yourself. And hopefully you guys will have the same incredible experience that I've had doing this thing just for myself. Vicky is asking what I think about Instagram hiding likes and it's just, I, it doesn't even matter anymore. Like I don't ever really even look at likes anymore. I mean, I tend to need them for brand deals or for projects and things like that. Like obviously people want to know, but I just don't even care anymore. I don't know if it's because I've been doing this for so long and I think I've just had the realization that none of this actually really matters. That realization for me has made me enjoy what I'm doing so much more. And Instagram hiding them, I think it might be a good thing because if you do tend to compare yourself to people, you compare yourself to people who have more subscribers than you. How did this person get more likes on this photo? And why did mine not do as well as this person's? It's so, so silly. I mean, there was definitely a time, you know, doing YouTube and stuff like this that I just started to stop enjoying it. It was maybe like five or six years ago. I feel like it's every three years. I kind of have this cycle of, yes, 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 I love this. Oh shoot, everything is just falling apart. And then it kind of just keeps going back up. So I feel like not just with YouTube, but with life and for everyone, this isn't just YouTube. I keep stressing that because there's a lot of correlation between YouTube, people's careers, whatever it is that you're doing, it all is the same. Like just because I'm sitting here talking to you, making this YouTube video, this is my job. This has become something that is work. And I'm so grateful that I really do enjoy it. I've had some jobs in the past that I didn't enjoy. And a lot of times you just have to do what you have to do. Just get it done and really just keep thinking about what is it that you're most passionate about? And how can you turn that into a career? How can you use that passion to not only make money, but really enjoy your job? It's definitely not an easy thing. And I think eventually, if you're persistent enough and passionate enough, I fully believe that you guys can do it. And I know this speaking from my own experience, and I truly believe that if there is something that anybody wants to do, if they really wanna do it bad enough, they're gonna do it. I have faith in you guys. I'd love to hear from you though. In the comments, what is the one thing that you want to do? What is something that you have done that you're super proud of? I'd love to hear it. Lily wants to know if we'll ever get an updated office tour. This is crazy because I actually am working on one right now. So when I saw this tweet, I was like, oh, you read my mind. Can't wait to show it to you guys. I've been waiting for one last piece of my office and it was a TV, so spoiler alert. <laughs> That's kind of what the video is gonna be about, but I can't wait to show you the new office tour. It's been so much fun to sort of put together where I edit and where I spend a lot of my days when I'm not traveling because usually I'm sitting on a plane editing on this computer. Well, that looks like that's all the questions we have. Thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate you. I feel like I don't do these types of sit down videos as much anymore. So if you enjoyed this, please let me know. And I look forward to seeing you guys in the next video. Bye.